Kathleen Hicks has in recent years developed a reputation as one of Mississauga's chief historians and writers. Already having published a handful of books, her current 10-part series on Mississauga's history has been a local favorite, but she wasn't always a historian. Kathleen started out as a children's author. Putting her children to bed, she would provide the nighttime stories. When her daughter suggested that she write books based on the stories, Kathleen was inspired. These stories, however, remained unpublished. Kathleen instead started working for newspapers and magazines. Over the course of her 40-year career, she has had over 800 items published and interviewed influential Canadians such as Tommy Hunter, Anne Murray, Adrian Clarkson, and Hilary Weston. Kathleen was also very active in the community. She volunteered as a host and producer on Rogers Television, started Canada's very first Lioness Club, and was the first lady on the Board of Governors for the Mississauga Symphony Orchestra. Born and raised in Mississauga, Kathleen decided to raise her kids here and remained here throughout her career. Her love for and attachment to the city has allowed her to have some very interesting experiences. Join me, Fina Pandia, after the break as I talk one-on-one -on -one with author Kathleen Hicks. And joining me here on One on One today, I have noted author and historian Kathleen Hicks. Kathleen, welcome to One on One. Thank you. Kathleen, you're a noted author and historian. Are you from the Mississauga area? I was born in the Lakeview area of Mississauga and lived here all my life. And what are some interesting changes that you have seen in the city since uh, you were growing up? Well, it was all country when I first was uh, living in Lakeview, um, and certainly I've seen it, all of the changes as far as development is concerned. Um, our city center is where it is, and I've I, I had uh, a lot of involvement with it when it was in the Cooksville area. So I've seen all the growth and know the some of the developers who have been here uh, since the 50s and. So it's, it's quite interesting to have seen all of this, apartment buildings especially, which right. we never had during my childhood. Well, you are a noted writer. Is uh, becoming a writer something you always wanted to do, or is it something that you fell into, or how did that come about? I more or less did fall into it because I've always had a library of my own, so I've always enjoyed reading. And I got libraries for my two children, Kathy and Marty, and uh, so I used to tell them stories besides reading to them in the evening when they were going to bed. I would tell them stories. And one day my daughter said to me, Mom, you've got to write some of those down. And so that's how it all started with me writing children's stories. And a few of them were published in the Port Credit Weekly. Do you think that uh, kids growing up today with the computer and the fact that everything is sort of done on it, that first of all, uh, we appreciate good writing and we are learning good writing skills? I just saw something on TV today about the language that they are using in their conversations with their friends. I'm not too impressed with that. I think the children of today spend too much time in front of the computers. It is a learning process and they do, if they're not just chatting to, your fr to their friends, but they're, they're uh, looking at different websites and whatnot, uh, I think it can be very educational, but I think it should be cut down to a, a shorter time each day because I don't think they're spending quality time with their family and mingling. Is writing something that's natural or can it be uh, learned? I feel that I learned it because uh, it just uh, it's a learning process and I've sort of educated myself by reading various books and I have a lot of writing uh, books at my elbow on my desk and uh, and so I refer to them quite often and it's a, it's a learning process. I've never had any writing courses or anything um, but uh, it's, it's been an interesting 
procedure all the way along, and I just uh, seem to learn more and more each time. I, I figure everybody should learn something new every day. Well, you've been writing for more than 40 years, and I think you've had more than 800 items published. Yes. Is there a certain style of writing you're more passionate about? Well, I started out after writing the children's stories. I was doing adult fiction. I have okay. 10 manuscripts at home. They're still waiting to see <laughs> the light of day. I sort of fell into the historical uh, end of it by helping to save the Cherry Hill House. And Bruce McLaughlin, who built Square One and saved the Cherry Hill House, had it moved, asked me to uh, write a brief for his um, uh, board to help them see the history behind the house uh, in order to see that it was uh, they were able to move it and uh, take care of it and pay for everything and so they uh, this this is what how it came about and he asked me uh, to write the story of the silver thorn to cherry hill right. and and that uh, project really got shelved and in I was working at the Mississauga News at the time so I was doing up to five columns a week so I my uh, um, it just kind of leaned different ways and I got into the newspaper writing and then again uh, with the uh, the Silverthorns of Etobicoke um, wanted me to write their history and I wrote a hardcover for them uh, that was uh, 150 copies, just limited edition right. for their family. And uh, we launched it in the Canadiana Room at the uh, library, the Central Library, and I met Chief Librarian Don Mills and I, he read my manuscript and we just kind of started all of this. So history is something that you sort of fell into. It's I not did. something you, you didn't start out to become a, a <laughs> writing history, did you? No, and I enjoy it immensely and I feel I'm really good at the research process. So I, I just uh, amaze myself even as much as uh, people are saying, how can you be putting two of these major books out a year? But it, it's just, uh, I'm very organized and I seem to accomplish it. You've written for a lot of well-known people like Adrian Clarkson and Anne Murray. What's, how did you find that process? It's very similar to what I'm doing with my history books. Um, you just ask them a lot of questions, put the article together and let them have a look at it and, and uh, and you just hope everything turns out all right, which it has. Stay with us. We have lots more coming up with Kathleen Hicks. Welcome back to One on One with Kathleen Hicks. Kathleen, you are an author and a historian. We all know what an author is. What exactly is a historian? Well, it's a person who goes out and gathers the history of the area, and puts it all together, and makes uh, these books happen. And, and I think that that's very important, that people really have to uh, learn about their community. And if there weren't historians such as myself who uh, gathered the history, then they wouldn't know about their area or their city. Okay, well you've been commissioned by the Mississauga Library <clears throat> to write a series of ten books. Mm -hmm. What are these ten books on? Mississauga was made up of nine major areas. Seven areas came into the uh, uh, city or the town of Mississauga in 68 and then Port Credit and Streetsville joined to make the city in 74. So the nine major areas are what I'm writing about and the tenth book will be on how our streets were named. How exactly does one go about doing research on history, local history, so far back? Well, fortunately, a lot of it has been recorded over the years. Um, and so it's in our libraries, the Heritage Foundation, uh, the Peel Archives, mm -hmm. uh, churches and businesses. A lot of them have some of their own history. And so it depends on what I'm putting into the book as to what I will be researching. Uh, but uh, I'm very fortunate in having these uh, places and sources available to me. Now you were awarded a five-year contract, which is um, the longest given to any author in Ontario. How long does it take to produce one book? It's a two-year process, but the last six months are really put right into that book. Right. But in the process of uh, putting um, the books together, 
Uh, when I'm doing microfilm at the library, if I see something on Port Credit or Streetsville, mm -hmm. I print it out, mm -hmm. put it in the file. When I start working on that book, which I'm just starting the Port Credit book now, I had two feet of material to go through. And over the weekend, I was sorting it out and putting it in chronological order from the Mississauga Indians right down through the years. And uh, so that's, that's how the process goes. Apart from writing about the history, do you have a role in the photography in the book? I do all my today pictures. You do them all yourself. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people send me things that they've taken recently, and if the if I feel that they look a little bit better than what I got or a little bit more dated, I, I do that. But I like to to compare the houses when pictures that were taken years ago, and then do a picture if the house is still there today, so you have a comparison. It's fun. Well, the photography aspect of this, uh, did you take classes for that, or how did you perfect no, that? No, I've always had a camera in my hand since I was a little girl, and I just have always enjoyed it. I took pictures of the creek and the trees and things when I was a teenager, and I've always enjoyed it. And I've had a, a Super 8 camera when my children were growing up, and, and I've always done a lot of that. So I, I enjoy it immensely. So would you say a lot of trial and error has produced perfection? Well, I don't know that my things are perfection, <laughs> but I've well, had a lot of trial and error. Well, obviously they've been so they've got to be very good. <laughs> I've had a lot of trial and error, but uh, it, it is a fun process, and I'm happy that I know enough to get a good picture. I have a good eye for it, I think. What has been some of the greatest challenges you face putting together this series? Um, well, trying to get people to stop procrastinating and get me their information uh, when it takes one or two years to get somebody to come across with some material on their family you almost want to give up and say well if they're not interested why should I be but I persevere because it might be a family that should really be in the book mm -hmm. and so when I do accomplish that then I'm very pleased but that's one of the drawbacks of the research process. Where are, are these books going to be available that people can see them have a look at them or even if they want to pick up a copy? Well, they are in all of the libraries. Mm -hmm. The Peel District School Board just bought some to put in their school libraries. Mm -hmm. um, they are all for sale at the Mississauga Central Library, uh, Mississauga Heritage Foundation, Benary's Museum, and Bradley House Museum. Um, and they're also, if it's the district, they're available in that local library. Oh, great. Well, mm -hmm. we'll look forward to seeing the books and appreciating our rich culture here. Thank you. Stay with us. Coming up, we're going to ask Kathleen Hicks about her TV career. Welcome back to One on One with the enchanting Kathleen Hicks. <laughs> Kathleen, uh, you also had a TV career going, I understand, a I while did. ago. I used to uh, do this kind of thing at uh, Rogers when they first started in 70. They started in 72, and I was there in 73. What kind of shows did you work on? Like, I understand you produced and you hosted shows. I had a show called Mr. and Mrs. that I had uh, Colonel Sanders and his wife oh. come on, and I did a show called Probe, mm -hmm. and I would have... Uh, people like a minister and different people from organizations and we don't talk about juvenile delinquency or or mar marital problems and things oh. like that and they would the first half hour would be of them uh, talking about what they did we'd open up the phone lines and and people would call in and ask the experts the questions and do you think being a writer helped you when you became a producer and a host I think that I just kind of fell into two because I went as as a guest okay. on a show on Cherry Hill House and and Merle Zorb who was manager of the of um, Rogers at that time it wasn't called Rogers it was Cable Ten uh, just said I want you to do some shows he was so impressed by my interview and I and I just I've been his friend ever since <laughs> I enjoyed it immensely. What did you enjoy most about TV? Um, just. Uh, being able to get information out there to people, um, just the involvement on a volunteer basis, that's very important. Rogers needs volunteers all the time and the kids get the experience of doing camera work and things like that and can go on and make a career out of it. If they when your own kids saw their mom on TV, how do they react? 
Um, well, I think that they were so used to me doing the Super 8 films and and uh, things like that with them when they were growing up that they didn't really take much notice. I did a gong show at uh, at uh, Huron Park one when the gong show was on TV. They didn't want to be near me at all. <laughs> they thought I was crazy. <laughs> Well, at least, you know, they can go back and tell their other friends that, uh, you know, the mom was slightly different <laughs> than, than the other mothers that were staying at home. Uh, and, yeah, and I was different, all right. <laughs> um, besides uh, TV, you're also instrumental in starting the farmer's market, I understand. Uh, through you? my starting the First Lioness Club in Canada. Yeah. I was doing a column at the Mississauga News called Service Club Highlights. Mm -hmm. I was dealing with 40 service clubs in the area. And my husband uh, got involved with the Lions Club at Square One, mm -hmm. that is still going. And, uh, and the Lions Club got started up with us both being president of the Lions and the Friends, uh, the uh, Lions and the, the uh, Lioness Club. Okay. And we, the Lions, Lionesses used to have a booth there and sell hot dogs and hamburgers. That was our fundraiser. So were you the hot dog lady then? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. But that was a, a fun experience. When we opened it up, I arranged a parade, and and Mayor Dobkin marched over from City Hall, and not the City Hall we have now, the one that was on here in Ontario. Do you ever go back to the farmers market now? Occasionally, yes, and talk to everybody there. But I, I always, every ten years since uh, the lionesses were kind of incorporated into the Lions Club, so now it's uh, co <laughs> lions, you might say, and uh, and so I always, every ten years since. Uh, um, 75 when the Lioness Club started, 85, 95 uh, last year. I always go for the 10th anniversary of when I started up the club and they always treat me beautifully and I speak and I gave them a picture of the m farmer's market opening up and so it's kind of a nice relationship. So being involved with the Lioness Club has uh, also enriched your life in many different ways? Yeah, very much so. It's just great to have a, a background of that nature. I've always, uh, in the 70s, being with the Mississauga News, I used to uh, do the uh, Miss Mississauga pageants, the talent and, and uh, the fashion shows I hosted. And, and the involvement with Mississauga News was like opening a big door to me, uh, to the community. And I got uh, the five columns. I was doing all of the club news, uh, the nightclubs and things like that so it's it's been really really interesting Rogers and it's part of my history and the volunteer end of it has just been that's I'd rather volunteer than I would work well you're definitely a very well-rounded person <laughs> thank you stay with us we've got lots more coming up with Kathleen Hicks Kathleen, uh, you've sort of done it all. You're a writer, you're a historian, you've produced TV shows, you've hosted TV shows, involved in the uh, Lioness Club. Uh, is there anything left to do that you would really like to do? I'd like to see my fiction manuscripts published. That's uh, one of the things. I've had a few uh, um, agents over the years, but uh, nothing's ever got done. I think it, it's difficult in Canada mm. to become a Jackie Collins or a Daniel Steele. And uh, I feel I've got some really good material when I read the <laughs> manuscripts over. I think, oh, this has got to be published. Um, but uh, these books uh, are going to be uh, a great uh, legacy of mine, I believe. And if, if I don't com accomplish anything more than that, I'll be happy. Um, you're obviously uh, an expert on the whole Mississauga area, the whole history of this entire area. What are some of the really interesting facts that you uncovered doing your research that most of us may not even realize about the, the area that we live in? Well, there's something different about every area. I mean, when I went to Clarkson, I didn't, I hadn't been down there much. Mm -hmm. I thought, well, how am I going to write a book about this area? And then when you get to know people and word of mouth and you find out things like uh, the people are still living on their family property that uh, the family's been there for 200 years. I found a lot of descendants of the original pioneers. Really? And that, to me, is very exciting. And not only that, they have a lot of artifacts and, 
and uh, information and they're very historical conscious and they're very anxious to be in the book. And I think each area has a different kind of uh, interest like that. Uh, I was very pleased with the Meadowville Village that it was the first uh, heritage er uh, area in uh, Ontario. And to go into all these heritage homes that are out of the 1800s and sit and have tea with people and talk about their house, it's very exciting. When you are not doing research for your books or you're not writing your own stories, what do you do in your free time, your downtime? What do you, what do, you do for a, Kathleen I Hicks? I try very hard to spend quality time with my family. It's top priority with me. I enjoy having dinner at my son's with my grandchildren, and I've, I've just had my fourth uh, grandbaby, great-grandbaby, born in January. I had one... Uh, born on my birthday last year. Oh, so this would be a double celebration there. There you go. So I've got uh, four grandchildren, four great-grandchildren. So that's, I like to visit them and spend time with my family, mostly. I don't have too much time when I'm at home because I'm into research all the time and on the phone and things like that, but I enjoy every minute. What, uh, do you like to watch movies at all? I have uh, 750 videos, as a matter of fact, so over in t the last 20 years I've taped a lot of movies. That's, that's a lot of videos. Where it's do you a lot of off? movies. A lot of movies. Uh, I am into the old uh, movie uh, of the uh, 20th century with Rita Hayworth and Clark Gable and all the wonderful movie stars of that era. And so I've taped a lot of those and I've taped a lot of documentaries and it helps me in my work as well. And uh, I've done some t TV scripts in my time. What do you love about this area? Well, my daughter's been after me to move out to Sarney, where she lives, and I said, I can't leave home. This is home. I've lived here all my life, and I just want to finish this book project, and even then I wouldn't move. I'd like very much to get out of my uh, condo and get into a house again, but I don't know if that's going to happen, but uh, things are growing up around me. I live on here on Ontario Street, and the apartment buildings are getting, making me feel claustrophobic. So I, but I still don't think, even if I could get out into a house, that I would leave. You must have seen so many changes in the city. What's the biggest change that you've noticed from, say, 30 years ago? Well, our city centre. <laughs> it started 30 years ago. And uh, watching that grow is just uh, astounding. But having seen it right from the ground when Bruce McLaughlin just had his five-story or six-story office building there sitting in a cow pasture, and you look at City Hall and everything now, uh, that's a big change. It's a little mind-boggling, isn't it? It is. It really is. But uh, Mayor Hazel, uh, she's the one who got the City Hall change from here, Ontario. She went to Bruce McLaughlin, who owned the property, and he and said to him, uh, the city hall shouldn't be on Bur here on Terra, it should be on Bernard Thorpe. And that's why the city hall's where it is. Well, I thank you very much for being here on One on One, and I'm sure with the series that you've put together, we're all going to learn a lot about the area that we live in. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure being here with you. Great. Thanks, Bina. That wraps up another episode of One on One. I hope to see you next time.